Here are today's top stories. President Duterte is set to sign the national ID system into law once passed by Congress. Malcanyang considers importing oil from non-OPEC countries as fuel prices continue to increase. Fevox maintains alert level 2 over Mayon Volcano as it shows moderate activity. And three new teams are seeking to join the main league of the PBA. Good day, I'm Pia Rosas Moroto. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte is set to sign into law a bill seeking to establish a single Philippine identification system once ratified by the two houses of Congress. Both the Senate and the House of Representatives are expected to ratify the bicameral report approving the national ID system on Monday. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says the landmark bill is part of the legislative priority agenda of the Duterte administration to improve the delivery of government services. The proposed bill seeks to integrate and interconnect some 30 redundant government IDs by coming out with one national ID system also known as PhilSys. The Philippine Statistics Authority is mandated to act as the PhilSys registry a repository and custodian of all data including the PhilSys number, registered records, and information of all persons registered in the PhilSys. Malacanang warns businesses not to use the train law as an excuse to jack up prices of goods and services. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says some unscrupulous businessmen have been using the tax reform law and the recent oil price hikes to increase their prices. Roque says the suggested retail price set by the Department of Trade and Industry still applies, especially to protect consumers from being taken advantage of. He adds that while an increase in prices of commodities is inevitable, businesses should not add to the burden of consumers. Roque encourages the public to report traders who charge excessive prices. Businesses that do not follow the suggested retail price may face penalties such as fines and closure. Former and current health officials are set to face the preliminary investigation on deaths related to the Dengvaxia vaccine. More on this from Rom Dulfo. The Department of Justice ordered Health Chief Francisco Duque III, his predecessor Janet Garin, and 38 others to attend the preliminary probe on June 25 regarding the complaint filed by some parents over the death of several teens who received the controversial Dengvaxia anti-Dengue vaccine. Assistant State Prosecutor Maria Emilia Victorio, who chairs the DOJ panel, issued subpoenas to attend the probe, submit their respective counter-affidavits, and reaffirm their sworn statements before the panel. The panel is conducting the preliminary investigation over the criminal complaints filed with the help of the Public Attorney's Office, or POW, over the death of nine children. The Public Attorney's Office has been conducting autopsies of individuals whose death has been linked to the effects of the vaccine. It submitted evidence to the DOJ to prove that the vaccine manufacturer, Sanofi Pasteur, had already admitted as early as 2015 that the vaccine carries risks. Pau Chief Farsida Rueda Acosta said the Department of Health still insisted on its massive anti-dengue vaccination drive using Dengvaxia despite the admission of Sanofi Pasteur regarding its adverse effects on those who have not contracted dengue. Duque, Dr. Maria Lourdes Santiago and Melody Zamudio are facing two criminal complaints. The DOH suspended the vaccination program in December 2017 after Sanofi Pasteur said the vaccine poses risk to those with no prior dengue infection. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. The Department of Tourism has named Arnold Gonzalez as officer in charge of the Tourism Promotions Board following the resignation of Chief Operating Officer Cesar Montano. Gonzalez was unanimously chosen as OIC by the Board of Directors of TPB on Thursday. The 56-year-old career executive has been with the DOT and TPB for 30 years and assigned at various posts in Philippines and abroad. Prior to his designation, Gonzalez was OIC of Domestic Promotions Department of the TPB. Under the Tourism Act of 2009, the Tourism Congress is set to nominate a new COO in June. 
Montana resigned from his post on Monday following the 80 million peso controversy on TPB-sponsored Buhay Karinderia Redefined. Pending review, the food tourism program, including all other upcoming TPB projects, were suspended by Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat. Over 300,000 newly elected officials of the Sangguniang Kabatan underwent their last day of training today. The training held by the Department of Interior and Local Government and the National Youth Commission started last May 17. Acting Interior Secretary Eduardo Año says the mandatory training will give SK officials the knowledge which is crucial in performing their sworn duties. The DILG hopes the latest batch of officials would be honed into future leaders. The Sangguniang Kabatan Reform Act of 2015 requires elected or appointed SK officials to undergo mandatory training. The training includes modules on local governance, decentralization, and duties such as assembling meetings, forming resolutions, and ethics of public officials. Still to come, Malacanang considers importing oil from non-OPEC countries as fuel prices continue to increase. FIVOX maintains alert level 2 over Mayon Volcano as it shows moderate activity. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Para sa susunod na generasyon, kailangan ngayon, kabinasyon. This is one way of addressing the problem on uh, the illegal drug manage. And we value life of these surrenderers and uh, I think uh, they need also to be reformed and to be rehabilitated. The more drug affected yung isang municipality, yun ang ipapriority namin muna for the meantime. And it will be nationwide, of course. Rehab Binashon, rehabilitating the nation together. Businesses in northern Mindanao are encouraged to improve the branding and packaging of their products to make them more attractive and saleable in the global market. More on this from Miguel Hill. Owners of micro, small, and medium enterprises in northern Mindanao are urged to change their mindset in considering branding and packaging as important components of their products to increase global competitiveness. Linda Bonyao, director of DTI Northern Mindanao, said, Local entrepreneurs commonly harbor reservations in improving their branding and packaging. Bonyao attributed this to the additional production costs that branding and packaging may entail. She added that while products from other countries have good packaging, some of them are of lower quality compared to Philippine-made goods. Bonyao pointed this out as DTI is on the thick of launching its Pack Pilipinas, a roadshow that enables local traders to meet and consult with packaging and branding consultants and suppliers. For the Visayas leg, the roadshow visited Tacloban City on May 3 to 4, while the Mindanao leg concluded in Cagayan de Oro City last week from May 16 to 17. 
The final leg in Luzon will be held in Carmona, Cavite on May 29 to 30. Bonyao said the roadshow aims to encourage MSME entrepreneurs to consider improving their branding and packaging styles to entice wider markets and consumers as visual appeal remains a major factor among buyers. DTI Undersecretary Senaida Maglaya, who graced the opening event, said the agency can provide technical assistance to entrepreneurs wanting to avail of the program, which includes computations and payment schemes aimed at making it easy for traders to access packaging supplies. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. Malacanang is considering the importation of oil from non-members of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, in response to the increase in fuel prices. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says possible sources of petroleum products for the country would be the United States and Russia. He revealed that even China is reportedly getting its oil from stockpiles in the U.S. because these are much lower in price. Roque clarifies that this is only one option being considered as oil prices continue to rise in the world market. He also stressed that the surge in oil prices is beyond the government's control. Militant groups have blamed the train law for the increase in fuel prices. President Rodrigo Duterte graced the inauguration of the Davao River Bridge widening project in Ma Davao City. The 345 million peso project was implemented by the Department of Public Works and Highways. The bridge widening complements a six-lane Davao City diversion road and the newly opened Talomapuan Bypass Road, which serves as direct access for traffic from Davao del Norte to Davao del Sur and Bukidnon. It will improve the flow of people and products as well as the delivery of services to Davao City and neighboring provinces. The President also visited the Metro Davao Medical Research Center to meet the four soldiers who were wounded by an improvised explosive device planted by the New People's Army in Compostela Valley. The Department of Social Welfare and Development is recruiting about 8,000 persons to work in Boracay under its Cash for Work program. DSWD Acting Secretary Virginia Orogo clarifies that the program is open only to workers and residents affected by the closure of the island. The cash for work workers will be deployed to Barangay Balabac, Yapac, and Monokmanok where they will dig, clean canals and streets, plant trees, and demolish illegal structures, among others. Those with related knowledge will be assigned to do technical office work or at the Disaster Operations Management Center. Each work will receive a daily wage of 323 pesos and 50 centavos. FIVOX continues to monitor Mayon Volcano, which remains at alert level 2. FIVOX says despite Mayon's moderate activity, there's still a chance that the volcano will spew lava and ash. Two volcanic earthquakes were recorded from Mayon within the last 24 hours. The last time that silver dioxide came out was on May 12, where it emitted an average of 994 tons per day. Residents are still prohibited from entering the 6-kilometer radius permanent danger zone and the 7-kilometer extended danger zone at the south-southwest to east-northwest sector. Up next, Taiwanese authorities arrest the brother of a slain Osamis mayor who is implicated in the illegal drug trade. Three new teams are seeking to join the main league of the PBA. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. Mainit na usapin ngayon ang isyu ng divorcio sa bansa, lalo pat nakalusot na sa kamera ang divorce bill.
The younger brother of slain Osami City Mayor Reynaldo Parohinog Sr. is set to face charges in Taiwan after being arrested there Wednesday night. Ricardo Ardot Parohinog was being pursued for his alleged involvement in the illegal drugs trade as well as other unlawful activities. PNP spokesman John Bularacao says Parohinog must first face the charges against him regarding his illegal entry to Taiwan. Parohinog was arrested by Taiwanese authorities as a subject of a red notice, an advisory from Interpol alerting their countries of his outstanding warrants. The Department of Foreign Affairs is coordinating with the Taiwanese government to facilitate his deportation back to the Philippines. About 360 families who lost their homes in a fire in Quezon City last Wednesday are receiving aid from the local government. The victims are currently staying at the Quezon City Parks and Wildlife. Based on reports from the Bureau of Fire Protection, the fire started at the house of a certain Rodney Pedrogosa. Five persons were injured, while half a million pesos worth of property were destroyed. The Quezon City government has provided food and relief goods for the displaced families. They were also given financial assistance worth 2,000 pesos. Meanwhile, the residents expressed fears that they will no longer be able to return to their homes. The area where their homes were built is government property. The victims will ask the Parks and Wildlife Management to let them stay there for another week until their situation improves. At least three prospective teams are seeking to join the Philippine Basketball Association. PBA Commissioner Willie Marshall disclosed that the three teams that have yet to be named already have experience in playing the PBA D-League. Marshall said that if the entry of the three teams pushes through, the league might have daily game schedules to accommodate the 15 teams. He said there are already initial deliberations on the league's expansion, but it remains subject for approval of the Board of Governors. Marshall said that before any expansion can happen, the board will ensure that all teams can have better competition. Meanwhile, the PBA commissioner also said the trade committee is deliberating on several player trade proposals. Marshall cited the trade of Terence Romeo to talk and text Catropa from Global Port Batangpere as an example. For our feature story, better opportunities ahead for these inmates as they graduate from their courses while inside the new Bilibid prison in Muntinlupa. More on this from Janice Cavan. A total of 37 student inmates of the University of Perpetual Health System Delta Bilibid Extension School received their respective diplomas during the 29 commencement rites inside the new Bilibid prison in Muntinlupa City. New Bureau of Corrections Director General Ronald Bato de la Rosa graced the occasion as guest of honor and speaker. Among those present were the Extension School's faculty and the inmates' relatives. Of the 37 graduates, 18 completed their full Bachelor of Science in Entrepreneurship degrees, while 19 others finished their Computer Hardware Servicing course. The degree holders also completed their required extension school's internship program while under detention through Chief Superintendent Rexy Morales, the Chief of the Training and Education Department of Bucor, UPHSD President Anthony Tamayo and Daisy Tamayo, Vice Chair of the UPHSD Board. More than 500 student inmates have graduated from the extension school since it was established in 1985. Some graduates who requested not to be named expressed joy as the new degree they have obtained from the prison extension school has provided them new hope and a renewed life for a better future. The prison extension school is one of University of Perpetual Health's corporate social responsibility programs together with the Mangyan Mission School in Abra de Ilog, Occidental Mindoro. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Let's now check out weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country.
Let's take another look at today's top stories. President Duterte is set to sign the National ID system into law once passed by Congress. Malacanang considers importing oil from non-OPEC countries as fuel prices continue to increase. Fevox maintains alert level 2 over Mayon Volcano as it shows moderate activity. And three new teams are seeking to join the main league of the PBA. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Have a great weekend.